Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to check spelling in Microsoft Access. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Anybody who knows how to use Microsoft Word knows how to run the spell checker. Okay, sure. But I promise I'm going to show you some cool tricks that work in your Access database. So just bear with me. Today's question comes from Tanya in Seattle, Washington, one of my silver members. Tanya asks, is there any way I can get the spell checker from Word to run in Access? Well, yeah, Tanya, yeah. If you got the full version of Microsoft Office installed and you got the spell checker and it works in Word, it'll work in Access too, just the same way. The one downside is if you don't have Office, let's say you're running the Microsoft Access Runtime, the free version, then no, you will not have the spell checker available as of the last time I checked, which is now. So if you're watching this in the future, that might be different. But as of right now, you have to have the full version of Access installed. And yes, you get the spell checker. Let me show you how to use it. Okay, here's my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download it off my website if you want to, but this will work in any database you choose. Now, I'm not going to spend a ton of time showing you the spell checker features. I'm sure most of you know how to use spell check in Word, but there's a couple of quirks in Access. So let's open up my customer form. Okay, now to launch the spell checker, we hit F7 on the keyboard. Okay, what that's going to do is that's going to launch the spell checker. I'm going to move it off to the side here. And you can see it starts going down the fields in the form here and it finds super spelled wrong. All right, I can either ignore it, ignore all those words, change it, change all of those words. That's dangerous. Be careful. You can add it to your personal spell checker so it doesn't catch it in the future. That's great for like names and addresses and company names and stuff. Okay. You can ignore the notes field in the future if you want to. That's good with like email addresses and such. All right, I'll just hit ignore. There's no one, now it goes to the next record. All right, ignore, ignore. And it's gonna go through every record in your form. Now you might not want it to do that. You might want to spell check only the current records. Let me close this. Now there's a couple ways you can get to this point. If you have like I have here a customer list form. When I open this up, let's say I open up just my record here. Okay, notice on the bottom, when I double click there, it only has one record in here. So if I run the spell check now, F7, okay, ignore that, and it's done. It's not going to run through every single record in the form, all right, in the table. So it's all depending on how many records you got here. Now, if you don't do this, if you do open up a form that's got all of the records in it, right, 29 records in this case, if you only want to select just this record to spell check, Click on the record selector and only select that record. Now, if I hit F7, all right, it'll find super again. If I ignore that, it's done. See that? I selected the record and it will spell check just that record. Likewise, if you only want to spell check a certain field, then you can select just the text in that field. Let me spell something wrong over here. All right, I'll, I'll put a U in there for Parkway. All right, now if I select the whole record and hit F7, all right, it finds that first, ignore it, finds super in the notes field. All right, but if I only want to, let's say I just want to check the notes field. I don't care about all this stuff out here. I don't want to check names and stuff, stuff like that. Just select this text and hit F7. See, now it only goes to super, ignore, and it won't jump to the rest of the fields. If you select like a notes field, it'll only spell check the text you select. Okay. Now, what if you don't want to have to remember that F7 is spell check? Well, it is on the ribbon. If you go to the home tab, and where is it? It's right there in the records section, right there. That guy right there is spelling. And if you hold your mouse over it, it says F7. But again, I, you know, my users don't always have to run through the, the, the menu to find stuff. And I like to leave those off myself most of the time. So how about we make them a little button right here, right? Now, to do this, you're going to need one line of VBA code, just one line. Don't be scared. If you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. I'll put a link down below you can click on. All right, it's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started with VBA, but it's real simple, real easy to do. Watch, I'm going to show you how easy it is. Ready? All right, so we're going to go to Design View. Now, you can grab a new button up here, right, out of the Command Toolbox here. All right, that's your Command button. Click it, drop it. Now, the wizard starts up, and there's a lot of cool stuff in here in the wizard that you can use. But what we want is not in here. All right, you get Print Table, Auto Dialer. Oh, auto Dialer is still in there. You know, you can do the quit application. There's all kinds of cool buttons you can make, but what we want, there's no spell checker option in here. Note to Microsoft, you might want to add that. All right, cancel. We're gonna have to do it ourselves. 
So we're going to put in here in the caption, spell check. All right, you can make your button as big as you want. Make it like this. I don't know. Do whatever you want with it, right? All right, let's open up the properties for this button. Double click on it. Brings up the property sheet. I don't like command 31. Let's give it a good name, right? Let's call this spell check BTN, spell check button. Okay, now what do we want to happen when I click on that button? Well, that's going to be its on click event. So right click, go to build event. That's going to bring up this scary looking thing. Ooh, uh, if you get another menu up before that, that says what builder would you like? Pick the code builder. I covered that in my intro to VBA, right? And we don't need this. Don't worry about that. We can close that so it's not so scary. Okay, and right here, notice I'm in the private sub spell check button click. This is what's going to happen when I click on that button. Notice I've got two other buttons here. I've got a contact button and an order button, and those just open other forms, right? Do command open form contact app. Command open form order app with some criteria over here. Okay, and I cover those in other videos. But what we want to do is when we click on this button, I want to launch the spell checker. So here's the command you need. Are you ready? Do command, D-O-C-M-D dot run command that's basically run something off one of the me the menus the ribbon menus right and there's a big long giant list of stuff in here you can do and i'll cover most of this eventually in these different videos and i cover a lot of them in my my full developer classes but the one we're looking for is a c c m d spelling s p e l there it is right there a c c m d spelling access command spelling in other words run the spell checker that's it. This says, run the command from the, the ribbon spelling checker. That's all. That's all you need. One line. See you know how easy this stuff is? You just got to know, you know, you just got to know the, someone's got to show you what the command is. Now you know it, right? That's, that's what I do. That's my, that's my job is to teach you how to do this stuff. It's real simple. All right. So save this. I'm back over here. We're going to close everything down. Whenever you do any programming, always shut the form down and restart it. Trust me. Open it up and click, and there you go. It starts the spell checker. Right, ignore, ignore. But again, now it's going through every single record. You might not want that. Now, again, if you select the record ahead of time and hit spell check, and oh, wait, oh, no, it's still going to go through them all. That command is going to run through all the records regardless because. When you click on this and then you click on this button, it takes the focus away from that record selector. So what you need to do in your code is you need to tell Visual Basic, hey, select the current record that I'm on before you run the spell checker. Guess what? One more line of code for you. Ready? Do command dot run command. ACCMD select. Oh, I hit select all by accident. It's select record. ACCMD select record. That says select the current record first, then run the spell checker. All right, come back over here. Let's close it down. Save changes, yes. Run it and spell check. Okay, ignore, ignore, and we're done. See that? There you go. Now you got a button. You can spell check just the current record. Or if you want, you can spell check the whole thing. Whatever you prefer. I like to do just the current record. Now, what if you only want to spell check certain fields? Like last names, for example, I don't want to bother spell checking those. Now, as you can probably imagine, I've added Rost to my spell check dictionary. All right, but what if I typed in here Rostack like that? And then I hit spell check, and it's going to stop on Rostack. What if I want to tell Access I only want to spell check certain fields? Right? Ignore the names, ignore email. I only want to spell check address. Maybe, Sadie, that's up to you. The notes field here, obviously, right? Just those three fields, let's say. How do you do that? Well, that's a little bit more involved. That's about, uh, I'm going to say about six lines of code. And I will cover how to do that in the extended cut for the members. So in the extended cut for silver members and up, I will show you how to only spell check specific fields. You could say check this field, this field, that field. Don't check the rest of them. A couple more lines of code, like six lines of code total. Uh, as a reminder, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, not just this one, all of them. There's like 300 and some plus of them now. There's lots and lots and lots of stuff to watch, and your membership is definitely well worth the investment. Um, that's about it. I'm Richard Rost, and this has been your tech help for today. I will see you next time.
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.